Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are starting the new topic of roles in game design. Okay, what is a role? So <clears throat> we see that in computer, uh, you know, any application development. Okay, there are many people in software design. And these people are like programmers and designers and analysts and testers, debuggers, etc. Okay, they have different roles to play at different times in the design of software. Same is the case with game design and programming. Okay, there are different roles and we are going to study these roles. Uh, what are they? They are very important and you try at the end you will try to choose one role like for example if you want to be in any of these roles I will ask you you have to tell me what role do you want okay out of these many roles and why do you want that role? Do you like it just because it's your personality okay? Or do you like it because for example maybe it has uh, good salary ratib is good or maybe people like it for example so you have to tell me at the end and i will ask every one of you the the rules that you like okay maybe it's more than one role okay and you will also tell me the rules that you don't like okay so we start with the discussion that game is a software program okay and we know that software is developed in teams and each member of a team works on his or her specialty until everyone's work is integrated to create a single work. So some may design one class in uh, um, let's say JavaScript or uh, sorry Java or C, C++ there is one class another person is designing another class. Then there are people who are testing the classes. So when all the classes are working fine we integrate them and there is a person who integrates all those classes. So games are developed in much in the same way. But the team members of the game they are of different experiences. Okay not just programming. For example we have designers, we have artists, we have level designer, programmer, sound technicians and musicians, producer, business people, marketing people, writer, etc. There are even many more possible. For example, we can have uh, a medical doctor, okay? In a game, we now have also like artificial intelligence expert, machine learning expert, game analyst. There are many, many roles. Why? Because the games are, you know, now very complex. It's not like before where there were only graphics, music, and uh, gaming uh, logic. No, it's much more. Okay, and you know that artificial intelligence is very important part of the game. And because of artificial intelligence, there are many things in the games which require many, many more people. So we have lawyer, Mahami, for making sure that everything is legal. That's also an important point. Okay, so you make sure that you don't do anything which is illegal and because of which you may have a problem in the future. So it's about copyright issues. You don't want to use something in your game, okay? That may create a problem because someone else may say that this is, uh, you know, uh, material from uh, my game or from my source, my website, etc. One example is the Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird was a game that became very popular, okay? Around 2014, I think, okay? And it was soon removed because it had copyright problems. It had more than 50,000 downloads, I think, in just a few hours. Okay, so copyright is an issue because of which you, you, you will have spent time in making games, but if someone says that you have violated their copyright, so you have to remove your game and maybe you need to pay them the money. Okay, the damage. Then game content, it is very important, it is legal. Uh, there are no political issues. Sometimes, like in different countries, you have different political issues you are not allowed to talk on some issues or to uh, you know um, have different discussions on something okay 
that is political maybe religion for example a religious issue cultural issue okay then there are people like literature so storyteller what is that okay storyteller is actually from the literature you have uh, you know different type of narratives or different descriptions that you include in your game and you can also have these people like people from physics background history background education uh, geography sociology medicine psychology etc okay sometimes we need team leads in fact almost always we need team leads okay so team leads maybe for programmers they can be for artists they can be for sound effects team lead for writers etc okay and what does it mean team lead so no normally we have a team lead when we have three to four people or more than that let's say so in two people two persons team okay they can both work equally or we can say that one person is in charge for the other but usually as the team grows up we need someone who should be responsible for the whole team okay who is going to coordinate the team members on the set of activities so if the game project requires over 10 programmers then it is common to have several programmers lead for specific parts of the game so let's say there are 12 programmers so maybe we have three or four or even five different teams some may be working on one level some may be working on another level some may be working on the strategy part some may be working on the physics part some may be working on the artificial intelligence part and so on so that way we actually divide the game team in uh, the game team whole team into different small teams some common positions are graphics lead ai lead and so forth okay so graphics lead programming lead in general can be uh, different types of other leads the team lead coordinates the efforts of the rest of the members and make sure they all work toward the same goal okay that's very important that the team lead the idea is that they don't waste time in those activities which are not productive or which will give you incorrect results so team lead overall is very important okay let's say you are doing capstone project so the team lead plays an important role in you know completing the project in time if your team lead is not good you will have trouble and if you are a team lead it is your responsibility to be more productive to be more you know engaging to have more leadership qualities why is this important because uh, even for you let's say uh, it is important because team lead is good for your cv it is good for your presentations it is good for your marks and even if you get, uh, get the same marks but the experience of a team lead is more than a normal person because team lead gets some experience of management or leadership okay the other members they will get the experience of programming or coding or writing etc but the team lead or the project uh, group leader is the one who gets like more exposure he has more interaction with the teacher and so on so we have three types of designers lead game designer or just game designers okay that's one type of designers and we are talking about designers now okay so first was the like uh, team leads then we are talking about designers in general so game designer this is one thing then level designer okay they can be lead level designer or level designer or world builders and interface designers so these are three <clears throat> different jobs remember okay so even designers you cannot say just designer is it about game design is it about level design or is it about interface design okay so what's in game design we are going to differentiate between these three okay first game designer the game designer is the visionary which means that he has an overall view of the game he has the role yeah, of how will this game be or okay the details and the high level things okay he must be able to communicate and present ideas so he's someone who has good communication skills and presentation skills he must be creative and imaginative 
okay technically savvy very expert technically he can he is able to understand the technology if he doesn't understand the technology he cannot think of games so for example there is a game designer who does not understand the details of unity he cannot design like games in unity he cannot think actually of those things which are required or he may have some ideas which may not be implementable so it's very important that the lead game designer is technically expert savvy means expert artistically astute artistically he is very clever okay artistic uh, you know his artistic um, vision is very good he has artistic expertise he must be a good writer to write and explain the things which are required to be understood by the team members and finally he must have passion for the game okay what is passion he must actually love it he is not just doing it for the sake of job what we call it shogaf okay so he must have the shogaf of having uh, this shogaf of uh, developing the game okay so that is the uh, game designer next is the uh, so so in the game designer responsibility what are the responsibilities then give input on game design issues what are some problem with the game design what type of issues well right now we don't know but when we proceed in the course we will see what type of issues can be there propose gameplay ideas how do you play the game okay at what time what should be the player doing for example build and test scenarios and missions okay what are different missions what are different levels okay what are uh, you know the main responsibility of the player to do in each mission test and balance gameplay parameters okay it should not be very difficult it should not be very hard it should not be something like we discussed in the last uh, the expectations of the player if you remember in the last lecture we talked about the expectation of the players so the players should expect something and this uh, game team designer the game uh, lead should actually have designed a game according to the expectations of the players test the usability of the interface what is usability of the interface well it contains many things for example first it looks good then it is consistent the fonts are same for example it can be seen on different screen sizes okay it can be seen in like uh, different light conditions the font should be such and uh, all the parts of the screen should be accessible from the start place so you can go to every part every button every option etc update the game design document regularly now we will study about the game design document and that is very important okay what is in game design document it contains complete details of the game everything about audio about you know if there is any video about different sounds about gameplay about levels about the resources about game objects about the goals everything that is possible about the game okay for anyone involved in the game it should be there in the game design document and you know this responsibility is very difficult that you have to update the document regularly so that's hell of a job all those ideas they are very important and if the game team and the game designers they cannot do it it means that uh, actually the game will be a flop it cannot be succeed then we have level designers and interface designers the second and the third type the level designers are also known as, as the world builder why do we call it world builder because in every game you are talking about some world okay so every stage is a world when you change to next stage stage that is a different world so the level designer responsibilities include that design detail levels okay should it be a city level for example will it be in desert sahara will it be in a forest okay will it be raining when it will be raining for example and uh, are there going to be any houses what are going to be there in the house can you enter the house or can you not enter the house like said the door is locked you cannot open it okay are there going to be any walls okay is there going to be any water and so on every detail okay that is the uh, world builder responsibilities designs and implements game content okay the resources in the game how the player moves at what speed for example at different 
locations at different times and how much time will the player have to finish a level etc evaluates levels of bugs playability and fun if there are any bugs in the game okay graphics issues sound issues gameplay issues they are going to be evaluated by the level designer is it playable and is it enjoyable if you cannot enjoy a game you cannot play a game then of course it's not a good game so it is the responsibility of level designer to do that uh, in detail then interface designer responsibilities understand the target audience that is very interesting and very important role so if you are going to design an interface for young children small children it is going to be different in colors in fonts okay in number of options there will be very little number of options maybe one or two buttons one button to start the game another button to exit the game for example sometimes you may have the options menu okay but it will not be in the front it will be in some side so the children do not use that for example okay then ensure the ui design meets the audience needs okay so you are going to make sure that if you are designing for older people young people for uh, girls for boys for young boys for senior age boys etc you have to consider all those options oversee the development of the ui so all the ui they are going to see create and maintain art asset for the ui what are art assets okay so user interface in game whether they are like scoring on the screen whether they are like progress bars whether they are like uh, you know uh, different uh, uh, resources for example in different games uh, let's say you make a city in a game so for that city you will need uh, uh, you know houses first then you will need building material then you will need to buy land you will need some other resources okay you will need to see the map and so on all this information is part of the game ui and in some you know games the ui makes the game a success or a failure if the ui is some games they may not be very good for playing in general the playability may not be very good but the ui is so excellent that you want to play it okay so the ui and art assets are those uh, you know things which you use in the ui the images the graphics etc okay then seek feedback from art director on style and mood so there is an art director and the job of the interface designer is to have input or feedback from the art director about what should be the style so if you see in different games let's say i'm sure almost uh, every one of you have played the games in which you choose one team so that team has different players and each player has let's say some uniform okay uh, or they have some dress okay they have different types of armors and if you are talking about a games in which let's say there are different countries so every country has a different flag it has a different architecture house design uh, market design etc all those things they relate to art okay so there is an artist which decides who decides that how should they look for different levels for different teams for different eras in the game okay coordinate user testing to identify usability issues okay so the user testing is also there in the very first lecture i talked to you that you will need people who will test your game and those people are the usability uh, you know users who test the game for usability okay so another type of uh, people in game teams they are artists so we studied the very first thing was programmers okay uh, then they were designers okay now there are artists so there is an art director there is lead artist there is 2d or 3d artists okay so artist can be divided into 2d or 3d there is texture artist what is a texture we will see some texture example in the game okay we are making and we will have some textures in our games environment modelers okay what is the environment it can be your sky it can be your mountains it can be the water etc okay part of the environment in which the world is built lead animator and we will see the animations okay they play an important role so animator is the one uh, who animates the characters and this is again a special area programmers cannot do it designers cannot do it 
animator is a specific job okay it has its own skills and then there are character animators okay so animation can be of different types animation for example of character character is different thing and that of normal animations moving objects is a different thing okay maybe it's possible that you can merge them together normally in this course actually we have to do everything although art is not in this course so we are not going to do any arts okay so there is no artist but the designing and programming we are going to do even in the designing side so you are going to have mostly be responsible for world builder okay if you are going to start uh, start from scratch then you are going to be lead uh, lead game designer the one who has the whole idea okay but most of the games uh, we are going to create they are not from, from scratch we will have some existing code and we are going to complete the code so in that case it is mostly about some programming and some design okay in this course okay so in the programmers okay we know that there are different types of programmers but the programmer piece together each element and make sure everything works as a whole how the, it is the programmer who will move the character because it's all uh, everything is about input and output in the game so when the user presses any key when the user uses joystick or any input mechanism it can be gestures like the games using uh, connect microsoft connect it uses gestures to uh, you know i'm not sure if connect is still available but it used to be there about six seven years ago microsoft had microsoft connect with xbox so with that actually you can move uh, you know your hands and your body to have a game but it was not very popular so i think it's no more available so that was a type of input so it is a job of programmer to connect the input with the game logic and then the game logic with the output so you have some input and output in the game logic and all of them they are connected by the programmer whether it contains graphics okay whether it contains some devices whether it contains audio video anything the programmer is responsible for connecting them all together because it is through programming that you actually have a progress in the game then there is technology director what is a technology director well overall you know if you are going to create a game that is going to use different technologies simple technology is that of different hardware pc hardware android hardware ios hardware they are different technologies or there is going to be different input for example as i told you connect is one input nintendo switch is another type of device so there are different technologies and even for some games there are specific technologies so there is going to be a technology director but not necessarily okay lead programmer okay and then games programmer so even technology director is part of the programmer team why because it is concerned with how do you program for different types of platforms okay uh, so game programmers as we said it can be ai it can be audio network graphics game engine and tools now network is also very important okay because you are going to if you have a multiplayer game okay it is to the multiplayer game that you do what you use network so you send data to a server or you send data to different uh, you know groups of player playing the same game what type of game design is that is it a centralized one there is a one uh, server which sends and receives the data or is it uh, like uh, peer to peer in which different players they send data among one another okay then there is game engine programming okay using the capabilities of game engine we will have the physics from game engine okay we will have uh, many other advanced options in the game engine that we are going to use and some other tools okay that uh, can be used in the game producers okay the job of what this is in taj so i'm not sure what is a producer uh, in arabic but producer is one who coordinates everyone's efforts okay everyone's efforts who are everyone everyone means the programmers montajun okay al montaj okay good okay 
Fine, that's a good name. So uh, producer is someone who coordinates everyone's efforts. Okay, they need to make sure that the programmers, the designers, the artists, the different team leads, they are working to achieve the goal. If one person is even one person is not doing his or her job, actually the game cannot be completed. So a producer manages a single game project. So there is a producer for a game project. He ensures project is delivered on time. That is very important. Okay, that's why he needs to coordinate the efforts. He ensures that the project is delivered within the budget. Okay, cost. So time and cost. And third thing is quality. Whatever is created, it works fine. There are no bugs. There are no problems. Okay, so producer has, again, very important role from the point of view of success of a game for the end user. Okay. Then there is associate producer who is like a right hand of the producer, who is next to the producer. He supports the producer or she supports the producer, documents the development process. Okay. How is development taking place? How many days, how many hours in this module, then the next module, and he needs to track down everything. Organizes research activities such as play testing and product comparison. Okay, so you test the game by playing it. So he organizes the activities. He does not play himself, but he recruits or he identifies the people who will test the game. So play testing is you test the game by playing. This is again a job category. So there are people who get salary for playing games and they are very expert and they are going to tell what is like missing in the game, what is good about the game, what are the problems. And last thing he does is the product comparison. So let's say you are going to make a game like Medal of Honor, for example, or FIFA or whatever, something like that in that category. We have already uh, discussed the different categories of games. So in that genre, you are creating another game. So what will happen? You compare with that. What should be better in this game as compared to the previous game? What is missing in this game and why is it missing? Okay, so a comparison is being done so that you do not miss and you do not lose. Then there are some other roles. Okay, musicians, motion capture. Now musicians is clear. Okay, motion capture. Does anyone know about motion capture? Any idea? What is a motion capture? Hmm? I have many videos, uh, maybe I try to, not feeling, no, it's not feeling, it's about, not emotion, it's not emotion. Ahsas, it is not feelings, it is about motion, haraka, yes, it's about motion, okay, so motion capture, how do you capture motion, what does that mean, okay, motion capture means, okay, motion capture means there is a technology, let me just, Okay, very quickly see if I can find something. I have many videos with me in different groups, etc. Uh, just give me one minute. So motion capture. There is also motion capture suits then. You wear those suits, okay? So I will just open it and show you. Just give me one minute. Uh, just give me one minute. Okay. So let me share the screen in that sense. Uh, share application screen, share Chrome tab. Okay. So here you see this YouTube video. They are normal actors. They are wearing some particular type of dress with these reds. You can see the red straps and then there are these white dots over here on their shoes, here on their head even for this character. What is important about this is actually these are used to capture your motion. And you can see this camera, particular camera here. You can see this camera over here. Then there are cameras on the other sides. Okay. So motion capture means, yes, motion capture means you are going to capture the position of these body parts. And then actually on top of it, you will remove these people and you will have your own characters. Okay, 
so let's see see this player okay for example this uh, not player sorry this actor okay what's she doing okay she has two sticks okay i think okay and she's sitting in this way particular way and look at this person if i play you see in the game how will it look like so this is you see actually see okay so these sticks they have been converted into like this okay so this girl is converted into okay so here is another thing you see in different games okay or in different movies okay so just see this So you see this person is actually translated in this actor. Okay. Now it was my turn to get suited up. Not itchy or anything. It's pretty comfortable, like it's kind of like your workout clothes. It's fun. I was covered head to toe in these reflective markers. Yes, in Avatar movie, they exactly do the same thing. So very briefly, what is something you can see? Okay these are created of this motion okay so that is the motion capture and in games we create you know motions from these how do these game players they work like actual human models okay this is just because of motion capture so you can see okay they are just uh, is it creating a dark rimy subway station i started off as crux needless to say Okay, so that's, uh, I will stop here. I will go back and we are going to finish the first part of the lecture. Just give me a minute. Reload the slides. Okay, so it's about uh, motion capture. Yeah, I was discussing about motion capture. Okay, so you understand what is the role of motion capture because how do you animate your characters? If you do it, uh, like we will be doing hopefully in this course, without motion capture, we are going to move our characters by ourselves. We are going to animate them, okay, using computers. But advanced games and latest technologies, they allow motion capture. So it's more like natural. If you animate it, it is not natural, okay? You see the, the characters, they are not like real looking. But for real, physics real motion you do the motion capture then there are lawyers mahami writers okay computing system technical support that's the last thing okay because you will use computers for you know game designing development everything so there is a team for that who is responsible for all type of technical supports for downloading and installing software which version to be installed then for uh, networking issues okay what type of networking issues should be there to solve them okay uh, having a license software okay when the license is expired buying a new license and so on all those things which are required for computing support now normally as a single user you don't need that you have your own computer but when you are work working in a company and there are hundreds of people and hundreds of computers okay and every computer has different software requirements then you need a big team to manage all those things then there is networking networking issue wi-fi lan issues okay network connectivity file sharing and all those things so this is also something okay so uh, the lecture content is finished okay but i want to discuss now of these different rules that we have discussed in the beginning i asked you questions which role do you like and which role you don't like of these different rules yes 